Bro. I'm district director for Mayor Pro Tem Gina Bivens, who is running late because she had a previous meeting before this one, so we should be seeing her soon. Really appreciate everybody coming out and being a part of these public meetings. It is being recorded and I understand Facebook as well. So if you know anybody that was not able to attend today, they'll have a chance to go back and watch. If you would please hold your questions till we get through the entire presentation, staff will be here to answer questions afterwards. Thank y'all for coming. All right, everyone hear me okay? Yep. Good. All right. So my name is Mitch Aiton. I'll be City of Fort Worth Project Manager for Trinity Boulevard Construction Moving Forward. Uh, I'll give you a quick overview of the project, what to look for in construction. Uh, we're actually going to do Trinity in a couple, in two different phases. So I'll explain that, how we're doing that. And then kind of give you a quick little overview of some other items that are coming to your, all the y'all's way out here. But, uh, Y'all got a really exciting part of town right now because there's a lot going on out here. Five years, this place is going to look completely different. Yeah. Sure right. So, sorry about how it's looking up there. Hopefully, everyone can see it okay. Um, we'll have some more exhibits in the back and we can, show, we can talk a little more detail if y'all want to see specific areas. But I'll give you a quick overview of what's going on. So, Trinity Boulevard, we're going to be redoing the road, bringing it from that asphalt road to a four lane concrete road with the divided median. We're gonna have a roundabout that's closer to 820, and you'll see that a little more detail later. You can see it in the back as well. And then uh, we'll have some really awesome landscaping that's gonna be coming in. It's not just a foreign little grass median. The developer agreed to help us out and maintain that, so it's gonna be really nice when it gets built. We're also gonna be building, rebuilding the, the 36 inch water line underneath the road. So that's gonna have some it's gonna have some implications on how we do construction, so I'll explain that a little more in detail. But that's just to give you a heads up when we go out there and start driving during construction. Uh, our water line construction is gonna dictate kind of how we have to do this. Also going out here is you might have seen some construction going on. It's off the road, but they're redoing. A, they're actually building a new TRE station off the rail out there, so that's gonna be pretty cool for all y'all when it comes in. Uh, that's gonna be done. About this time next year, they're telling us March 2023. So you'll see them working on the north side of, the, of uh, Trinity, up by, up by the rail. It's gonna be really nice. And then there's a lot of cool trail projects that are coming in for the 10 foot sidewalk, shared use path trails. So you'll see those getting built a lot of the time coming off the Trinity trails and then get you around Trinity Boulevard, future development up to the TRE station. So you'll see those coming in as well. So some of the improvements you'll see out there, kind of talks through a little bit already, but the four lane concrete road, the bottom median, uh, you'll see a new signal being put up at Salado. That'll be towards the end of the project. Uh, the landscaping, really nice illumination is gonna be coming in. It's gonna be a really nice project when it's done. So, all right, I think that'll work. So you'll see the first round, the roundabout's gonna be coming in towards 820. So it'll be a lot bigger than the one you see down here at Precinct Line. So, so it's gonna be instead of that one lane coming in each direction over at Precinct Line where it was a lot smaller, this will be a lot larger. It's gonna be a lot easier for trucks to roll through if you've ever seen a truck trying to get through a roundabout. We're also going to have some more pedestrian features so it's easier to cross. So you'll see crosswalks, you'll see different areas to make that easier as well. And then of course it's gonna be part of the landscaping as well. The developers can get involved on that. It's gonna be really nice when it's built. Also moving down the street, so anyone who's driven out here, especially during a rain event, you know the road's low. So we're, we're all out in the floodplain out here. So you'll see the roads start coming up. We're gonna be redoing all the drainage out here. It's gonna be a big task. You usually don't see this type of a huge development popping up in the middle of the city. It's usually on the outskirts. This would have already been developed all now, but if we didn't have storm drain issues, or, or not storm drain issues, but flood issues. So just know that going into construction is, this isn't an easy task for a contractor. We've got a great contractor, SJ Lewis, on board. But just know that going through, this is a construction zone. They're gonna be raising the grade. 
so you can see the existing road out there and coming up right next to you. Just drive through, drive slow, be safe. No one in, this is gonna be great. <coughs> but during construction, just don't expect it to be like a highway going through. If you have to get somewhere quick, try to go around. But we are gonna keep access open. There's gonna be times during the day when the contractor needs to keep it safe out there, maybe block some traffic for a little bit for them to get around. But just know that this isn't an easy task. To re you're gonna see that thing coming up. <laughs> so it's gonna be a, it's gonna be really impressive when it's done. So our first initial phase that's going to be starting at the end of March is going to be this phase one that we're going to be going from 820 to Salado. So what to expect out there, we have four lanes out there today. Basically we're going to build one half of the road at a time and flip you back and forth. Part of what's going on out here is we're redoing a 36 inch water line. So raise your hand if you like your water not running in the middle of the summer. None of us like that. So. Part of what we try to do is these larger water lines, we build them up and then we do our switchovers in the winter. So what to expect is you'll see a lot of construction going on of us installing the water line, this next calendar here. And then when we do our switchover to the brand new water line, that's gonna happen around the holidays next year. And then you'll see the road start falling behind in 2023. So it might be, seem a little slower than usual, but it's because of what we're trying to do with our water line. And this water line, actually what I've been told, goes straight to the airport. So we definitely don't want any water line issues on this project. And then uh, what you'll see before then though, this next calendar year is that area by the roundabout. We'll go back to there. So you'll see this start getting built up before as well. So the next calendar year, you'll see the, round, the roundabout being built one half of the road at a time. And then you'll see us doing the water line going towards Salado. And then in 2023, you'll see us following the water line and then flipping the road back and forth while we build it up. So I got an exhibit showing the construction phasing, but even up there, it's even smaller to see. But uh, just expect to see us flipping the road back and forth. It's going to be one lane each direction. And maybe at times in the fall, you may. Why aren't they getting more done west or east of the roundabout? It's because we're trying to get this water line built and we can't officially do anything with it until we get it switched over in the fall or in the winter. So it's just, just what we have to do to keep things safe for all y'all. And then what we're doing with phase two. So phase two, I don't know how, how many people get involved in what we have in our bonds every four years, but phase two is gonna get built or paid for by our 2022 bond that's coming up in May. But thanks to city management and thank you council member over there, they got us some funding to get started on the design early. So instead of starting this summer, we've actually been working on this for a while. So our phase two portion, even though the construction funding won't come until the summer, we're actually gonna be ready to go. So you'll see phase two coming later. What we're going on with that is taking it from Salado and go into where you see it already previously built at Thames, where TechStop previously rebuilt the precinct and Trinity Boulevard over there. So you'll see us tie right into that. Same thing, we got a water line we have to rebuild. So you'll see us follow that, and it won't seem like we're moving as fast as we can, but it's because we have to do the water line, get it switched over and test it, make sure, because we don't want dirty water going to your homes. And then we'll follow up with the road when we're able to do that. So phase two, while it won't start at the same time as phase one, phase one's gonna take longer in, in construction. So looking like phase one and phase two will all be done at the, around the same time. And when is this? It's about two years from now. So I know that sounds like a long time, <laughs> but uh, it'll go by quickly. But it's looking like both phases will be done all at once and it's a lot better than, hey, we get phase one and then we're gonna come back and redo it all construction again in phase two. It's all gonna get done at once instead of three to five years of construction that you'll have to sit through on Trinity. It looks like it's only gonna have to be two. So that's a good thing. And like I said, if you want to see some more detail, like zoom down on any crosswalks or how we're handling any intersections, 
I can, we'll be out back here in the back. Um, I'll stick around until everyone wants to leave. I got my contact info up there. If you can't remember my name, you can't remember my contact info. We've started doing a thing the last few years where we have a project page for all our projects, especially our big ones. So all you gotta do is Google Trinity Boulevard Fort Worth. And it's usually the first hit on Google. And then our city web page will come up, my contact info is up there. We're gonna try to keep it updated with uh, what to see next, what's been built. Uh, I checked it this morning, it wasn't up yet, but there's a, a link for what TechStop's doing on 820 called keep820moving.com. <laughs> they're trying to do that. So, but if you wanna jump up there and see how, what TechStop's doing, they, they're posting, they got really cool aerial shots that they're doing every couple months. And then they're putting up all any, any closures that are coming up. So you can find it through our webpage starting next week, or if you just Google Keep 820 Moving, that website will pop up. And uh, when I've tried to email them, I've gotten it back real quick. So the text that uh, coordinators will get back to you real quick as well. Yeah, so uh, anybody have any questions? And Sorry you can't see anything in great detail, but uh, I'll be back there in the back to talk anything later on if you need to. <laughs> yeah. Once this is done, uh, because our house butts up to Trinity, but closer to uh, Peace of Mind, but once this is done, is it going to limit access for uh, semis and big trucks from blazing through because of the roundabout? So the question was, is this going to limit access to semis? So we're not going to block semis from coming down Trinity Boulevard. There's still gonna be a lot of construction happening with the developer and other projects in the area. Yeah. So they're still gonna come up and down the road, uh, but especially when 820 is done, I mean, we shouldn't have any semis that we just need to use Trinity as a cut through. Um, but is the roundabout big enough to um, have the semis go through that? Yes, the roundabout will be big enough for semis to come through. So they're designed so a truck can get through and they're a lot of fun to try to lay it out that way, but they're they're laid out so the truck can make its way through there. Yes. One of my questions is about the uh, streets. The construction has just torn up Trinity Boulevard, and it's it's horrible. With this construction project, is that any compensation to for these companies who run these trucks through here and all this stuff? Are they going to refix our streets? That's number one. So the first question was, are we going to be able to keep Trinity a nice road after we build it with all the trucks? Well, it's dirty now because they've been tearing it up with all the stuff we got. Right. So, well, uh, yes, we have uh, we have our maintenance group that goes through and redoes anything's torn up. Uh, but uh, during construction, we just got to do what we got to do to get it built. Um, are they going to clean it up? That's yes. Yes. That's the. That, that, but the other question, are they going to clean it up? That is the, one of our checklists at the end of the project. Um, one, of the, one of the main things we need to do when we're cleaning up the project is uh, go through and clean up the ent entire project site. Uh, any debris left by the contractor, they're going to pick that up. We don't pay them their final invoice until everything's clean and we agree upon everything. So it's not that uh, once they're done, they hightail it and they leave. We actually have to pay them still. so. We got a little way to say, hey, you need to fix that before you leave. And so. departments, are they going to keep that low? Because crime comes in with departments. And we've been fighting that for like 25, 30 years, making sure that they don't roll those things in the So there was a question about apartments, and if you want any more detail on that, I'll need to point you towards oh. Councilman Bevins over here or somebody else. <laughs> yes, in the back.
around here. So it's the way we have to lay out these roads, it's a safety measure. Uh, this is across multiple cities, but we can't have some of the problems we have when the road comes later after a neighborhood's built is we can only have median openings every so often. It's, it's a safety issue. So some of the areas we can help with that is with the traffic signal if it's if we're having problems. We can always come back and retrofit and add a traffic signal if we are having safety issues. But we'll, we'll, we'll keep this, we'll keep an eye on this after it's built and make sure it's, it's not a problem for any, anyone. Yes, you've had your hand up for a while. So part of the difference with what you're going to see in the future is it is a wide open road the way it is today. It's four lanes of asphalt pavement. There's nothing for anyone to say, I need to slow down. Right. So part of what we do with our, with our complete streets at Fort Worth is when we have the concrete road, the lanes are they're, they're narrow like they are today, but you'll see curbs. That's a new natural obstruction that you don't see today. So the curves that are in the middle for the median, the curves that are on the outside, when you have those vertical options come up, it takes people that natural, I can drive as fast as I want away from them. So that'll help slow down traffic that's out there. We're gonna start the mic. So. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Raul Lopez. I'm the engineering manager okay. that oversees construction. Design and construction of arterial two foot work. Trinity is gonna be a new road. We're gonna race it. Going to look like it looks now. We're also going to be narrowing down the lanes. Those lanes that are out there today are very wide. They're going to be 11 foot lanes, not flooded lanes are there today. There's also going to be tons of landscape on either side and in the medium. That studies show that that tends to make people slow down. There's also going to be street lights and pedestrian uh, lights on the uh, on the sidewalks. That makes people. There's all, all kinds of obstacles on either side that studies show, this is going, talking about studies that go back to the beginnings of transmission engineering, show that obstacles on either side of the road make people slow down. So it's not, it's not gonna, it shouldn't be an issue. And about speeding, that's a matter of enforcement, and if that become, continues to be an issue, we'll, we'll talk to the uh, police department. Question in the back. Okay, they gave me a microphone. This is scary. Um, okay, so I live in Lake the River Trails West, and like she's like the lady over there said, we're supposed to get a third entrance into our neighborhood. And our understanding was is that it's going to come from the existing street across in Lake the River Trails North, which is Trinity Lakes, and then that road is going to be pulled across Trinity Boulevard into Lake the River Trails West. Can you show us on this map where that is? Do you have a pointer? And will you be able to turn left out of Lake River Trails West onto Trinity? 
And then you can already turn left on, okay, is that Trinity Lakes? That's River Lakes. Yeah. Okay, yeah, bottom right corner. Yeah, okay. So that is gonna be a new entrance for our neighborhood. Will you be able to turn left out of that? Yes. Yes, okay. So we will now have two options to turn left out of our neighborhood. Currently, we have two, but we're losing one at Old Squall, correct? correct? So at the end, we will have two options to turn left. Trinity Lakes, left onto Trinity, and then River Lakes, left onto Trinity. Correct. And Correct. then right only out of Old Squall. Correct. Okay. My next question is, when they raise up Trinity Boulevard, the homes that are along um, Trinity Boulevard in Lake Sub River Trails West, their current fence, what, what is going to be the elevation of the road in relation to those homeowners' fence that are on snow egret currently? That are they're they're you know that white brick right yeah so you'll see the road come up basically to that elevation there's gonna be a sidewalk ten foot sidewalk on each side of the road and it's gonna be tied in pretty close to the bottom of that existing fence that you see today so everything's coming up okay so it's come so currently there is a, a brown stone wall and then on top of that brown stone wall is a white brick wall. So what you're saying is the road and the sidewalk are going to be an equal elevation at the bottom, at the top of the brownstone and the bottom of the white brick. Right. It's not going to be perfect the whole way, but yes, yes. that's basically what you should expect when you see us build it up. Okay. And at what point is the new entrance to Lake Sub River Trails going to be started and or completed on that Trinity Lakes new entrance. Is that at the beginning of the project? Is that the end of the project? So that'll be built sometime in 2023. So the entire road will be open late 2020, 23, early 2024, but we'll be working to try to get certain intersections open before then. But it'll expect 2023 to start seeing the road open in certain areas. So it'll be more toward the end, is, that, is what you're saying? Right. Okay. I mean, we're going to be going from 820 to Salado, so we expect to see that's how we're going to build the project. So that's about the middle of the project, so you'll see that opening up sooner than the full road. So is there going to be a milestone schedule posted with with the construction so we can know so when, this, sorry. when things are going to happen? Yeah. So if you go to the city website, we'll keep, uh, we'll keep it updated up there, what to expect in the future, what's been open, what's closed. If you have any questions during the construction, just shoot me an email or give me a call. Um, I always get back to everyone within 24 hours, but I'm not going to hide any information from y'all. We'll, uh, we'll, we're going to open things up as we can to keep things safe, but yeah. In addition to that, what Megan was talking about, we've been told in previous meetings by the developer and by the city and contractors that the white fence on top of the brownstone will be raised. When will that happen? So there's certain parts of the fences that we will be rebuilding. There's some that aren't. Now our development. This is Lake right. River Trails West. Right. On the right side of the road going east. Right. So the fence that we're going to be redoing, we have a representative from the developer here and they're going to be working with y'all one on one on what's, how that fence is going to be redone. Anyone that has a home that's adjacent to any fence we look, that we're going to rebuild, the developer's going to start working with y'all one-on-one -on -one very soon. What, I need to ask the engineer something. You've done studies of raising the um, uh, Trinity up against the, the brownstone wall. What reinforcements will be put in place to reinforce that wall? So I want to clarify something. My understanding, Trent, can you come up here and correct me if I'm wrong? My understanding, the fences that are going to be on the wall that is going to be have to raise, be raised is the wall on the north side of Trinity. The wall on the south side is not going to be raised, is it? So, yeah. The wall on the south side was designed and constructed with raising Trinity in, in mind. So 
that's taken care of. It's just that old, older portion of Trinity, uh, Trinity Lakes on the north side of Trinity that was not constructed with that in mind. So those walls are going to have to have to be raised. And the developer, Trinity Lakes uh, developer, is coordinating that with those homeowners on the north side of Trinity Boulevard. The south side is not going to be impacted. So we so, live we live on Lake Huron Trails West, which is south of Trinity, correct? Yes. And so if you raise Trinity to the level you're talking about, cars driving by and trucks will be able to look right into these people's houses. So you're saying you're going to raise the walls on the north side, but not on the south side? What? That's never been a part of discussions in the past, so that's a change from previous presentations. So when, unless when, you misstated that. Yeah, I'm not sure what was said before, but I'm, I'm clarifying. When we talk about raising those walls on the north side, we're not talking about raising them 10 feet. We're talking about raising maybe 2 or 3 feet. That's all that needs to be done. So on the south side, you said you don't plan to raise the walls on the south side at all. The road will probably be, be even with, correct me, Trent, with the stone wall, and then you have another six foot of fence, which is your typical um, standard. There's only going to be a six foot fence there. Correct. And in some cases, with a little more if we don't quite reach. So you said the developer's representative was here. Could he address what they told us previously? Have him come up and explain. Do we have any confusion there? In the back right on the north side. Yeah, right. Uh, I'm a resident of the West, and I can tell you that we, there's never been a discussion about the South Wall being raised. It's always been the North that's been a conversation. And there's been conversations with the HOA in the North as well, just to make sure they're aware that those homeowners will be discussed, will have discussions with the developer. Every single one of their homes is going to be reviewed. They're going to go over what's actually going to be happening, how much is going to need to be filled in, how much is going to be raised. But on the South side, that brown wall, the reason it's there is because that was always envisioned as the elevation of the ground in the future. Uh, and that's why the fence started at uh, the brown wall, not at the even further set, uh, bottom down on the bottom. Line. So there's just, it's always been kind of the, the conversation. That's at least what I've always said at the HOA meetings that I've been to. I'm not an engineer, so a lot of it. So, would you repeat the question? So there, there's currently structural issues with the brown wall. There's been issues with it in the, uh, over the course of years. So, will the raise up of the road reinforce the brown stone that's currently there? Without having looked at what damage exists, and just from a structural, general opinion right now, if we do put dirt against that wall, that's going to brace that wall, but we'd have to look at each one of those um, damages to, to be able to assess that. And we'll look into it. So the developer has had a recent meeting that he attended in this very room, described raising that wall, he even discussed how it would be done. So that was a mistake. Also at meetings, um, when one of the meetings and starting with some easements in that, Representatives of Mr. Newell, who presented information at that meeting, talked about that wall being raised also. So, and we've always been told that would be raised. Now, and uh, there's a gentleman that lives here in the neighborhood that says, no, it's never been talked to. Well, I guess that's a, a difference in opinion. So, so from, does he represent Mr. Newell's position? Is right. the man that spoke? Yeah, sorry, I didn't get your name. Yeah, he's with the... Well, you were at the meeting, then I remember you. Mr. Newell said that would be raised and even described a procedure for how it would be raised. He has always stressed that the, the north wall, and it's always been documented in the engineering design drawings, that only that north wall is going to be updated. So I want to clarify something. They're, they're, it's been designed for 10 years. So. This is a public project, and the public right away starts at the face of that wall. That wall is not public, it's private. It's a private wall. So the developer has been coordinating some things with the walls on the north side, and that's going to be done by the developer because it's a private issue. Um, this project is a transmission project, and basically we stay within the face of the wall, coming onto the road, up to the, the next face of the wall on the north side. Yes, I understand. There wasn't a Bible in the room, I understand. Thank you. I'm sorry, I missed that. 
there wasn't a Bible in the room, I do understand what you're saying. <laughs> there is a Bible in the room. And I do have a view. <laughs> <laughs> we have a 2981 Colada Trail, and we were told we would get a wall. Are we going to? We don't have a wall. Where was that? I think she's uh, what, uh, east of Salado? We're on the southwest corner of Salado and Trinity Trail. Right there, at the corner house. Again, were you promised you would be given a wall by the city, or were you promised you would be given a wall by the developer? No. No. Okay. Mr. Miller, again, you have to talk to Mr. Miller about that. The city has now promised a wall there. Well, you're going to raise your road, and you're just going to leave our fence. At that end, at that end, so. yeah, we're raising the, so we'll fight you. understand, <laughs> we're not raising the wall altogether. As, you're you raising see, the street, dude. Let me, let me finish, man. If you see Trinity, Trinity Boulevard right now, it's kind of us going down from Salado, right? So we're evening it out, evening it out. So at your, at Salado, we're not raising it. Maybe a foot. I think at the corner right there, it's not due to the grade changes, but there was a fencing conflict that is being adjusted or, but it's not necessarily being raised. We have a wooden fence. I don't have a fence in front of me. So this is uh, Trent, well, he is the engineer, I'm not the engineer. I am an engineer, but well, I'm not the I'll engineer right now. So, this is Trent Kidwell. He's intimately, uh, you know, knowledgeable of the project, so he can give you some details <laughs> as to what we're going to do. Right. I, I do believe at the southwest corner there is the fence being replaced or adjusted, uh, but it's not due to the grade changes. Um, I believe there's something else in conflict, like the signal or sidewalk or something like that. So that may be true for that well, one. Well, people keep on going through our homes. Ours and the other across the street. So traffic goes through there like 90 miles an hour. They go through the other house. That they've been into that house so many times. When you say they go through, you mean they crash into your house? Yes, into the other house. Yes, sir. Okay, that's something. Yes, all the time. That's, that's correct. Okay. Well, that's something that that's something that our traffic engineering team needs to look at. This, this product is not, it doesn't contemplate to go further out from Trinity Boulevard, but we could look at that. We probably need to talk to you, man, we probably, probably need to talk to you at the end. Yeah. I'm sorry, I forgot your name. May I speak? Sure. First off, the people here who are members of this church, probably the contributors, the pastors, the deacons that built this church. I've driven by this a hundred times. And you went, sir. You went thought, my, thought, thought nothing of it. Okay. This is magnificent. This is a great addition to our community. Okay. Thank you very much for those who have done that. Uh, what we're talking here today is a very difficult and complicated issue. We need improvement to Trinity. How we do that, we're, that's what we're discussing. This whole process right here is democratic process. Our leaders, our leaders, and we're, we're, we've got a right to speak up and our leaders are listening. I want to say thank you to our councilwoman, these people have worked real hard on this, and they're trying to give them something better. Now, exactly what they're proposing, we have difference of opinion. That's called democracy. Okay, so, how do we move forward? Do you have a question? I, <laughs> Thank you. I was wondering 
when the second phase of this takes place from Salado going uh, east towards Precinct Line, there's going to be drivers who are frustrated, who are going to zip through our neighborhoods and go down Salado and go through Phase 1 at River Trails to exit onto Precinct Line. Is there any way to stop those irritated, frustrated drivers from turning right on Salado and zipping through our neighborhood, uh, commercial trucks, um, you know, do, do you understand what I'm asking? I do, and, and that's a challenge, I understand. I mean, I'm, I'm a resident of the neighborhood myself. There was a school built, you know, right across the street from me, and obviously people did cut through that shouldn't have been cutting through. What we do is we pull signs, and, and we, we pull signs of no through traffic, no truck traffic, and we, if it becomes an issue, which well, that's what we need you all to, to call us and email us and tell us if it's become an issue, because we're not here all the time, right? It's so that we can call the police and enforce it. It's, it's a matter of enforcement, obviously. Yeah, and, and one more comment. That street is not terribly wide. It's so late, it's not there. And if we have frustrated drivers who are in a hurry, cutting by this lady's house, down into the body of phase one river trails and over to exit on the precinct line, it's going to be pretty dangerous because they're already upset that the, the traffic's being restricted. They're going to be driving through our neighborhood at speeds faster than they normally should. So if we need to call a cop and put them out there and start issuing citation, that's what we'll do. You know, uh, the, that's police, a the police are, are very busy. I, I understand. They're at the border. <laughs> They're at the border. <laughs> um, are there going to be any protected pedestrian or bike crossings across Trinity anywhere west of Salado just to be able to get down to the Trinity Trail without having to go all the way through river trails to get to it and everything? Yes, there's currently, if you look at the exhibit, you can see it, it's between the roundabout and the signal. There's a pedestrian hybrid beacon where if you push the button, it'll flash red until cars stop and allow people to cross. Regarding phase two, um, how close is the road going to be to the fences along uh, those houses that uh, back up to Trinity Boulevard? And will the landscaping follow all the way down to Thames? The, the landscaping we're talking about for phase one, is that going to be uh, all the way down to Thames? The plan is for the landscaping to continue. Um, I believe that's supposed to be maintained by uh, Ken Newell or the HOA, so as long as those get adopted correctly, uh, we'll continue that plan. What was the first question? How close is it going oh. to be to our fences? How close? Is it I believe the south side, um, the edge of the roadway is about the same. Um, I, in, I'm going from memory, I think the north side only gets about four feet closer to the existing fences. So similar, similar to what is around? Yes. Can I piggyback off of her? I wanted to clarify something. The landscape is going to be maintained by a private owner association. That, that, that street is an eyesore, those fences that are always falling down on the opposite side of Trinity Boulevard. And so the, I'm following like two or three different people. If they're going to make this area look beautiful and make it look uniform, they, if y'all are gonna do private contractors, they need to make some opportunities for those homeowners and put some money in there because it looks terrible. And we love this neighborhood, it's beautiful, they're making it wonderful, we love the project, but that side, just like y'all were talking about, the other side with the problems with the drainage and the walls not being stable, those fences are coming down all the time. It just looks horrible. It looks horrible. They need to do something to make it uniform so that the whole thing will be 100%, you know, aspect and beautiful. We, we understand. I mean, uh, wooden fences are not my favorite or anybody's favorite. Unfortunately, wooden fences, when all the fences are private, not public improvements, those are private. When those developments are built, the developer includes a privacy fence. I think that you said that, the develop, that there's a private developer or somebody that's gonna work with the other side that when they're raising up the fence to make right. the changes, it, is that gonna be the opportunity for the other side? 
They're, they're going to work with the owners on the north side because that fence needs to be raised and that limits their privacy. Basically, the road needs to be raised, therefore it's forced to make change in that fence. That's not the fault of the public yet, property owners. It's, it's how the project is designed. But on those other fences, that's up to the developer who wants to do that. I, I cannot speak for the developer. Uh, yeah. uh, okay. I can just say... Here's the representative of the developer. Those wood fences, those were done outside of the street. Yeah. So, Well, years ago, a lot of the gas companies promised to put up a masonry fence. They never ever moved forward, and that's the frustration you're hearing from the River Trail side people. Okay. So that's why they're like going, "Hey, we're going to make this all pretty. Let's do it right, and not just." And then, no, no fault of those homeowners. Right, right. Fences are expensive. Stupid, especially the ones having big metal, I mean, big concrete embankments and then bend. So, after these two questions, I'm going to pitch an idea to the audience, and I think it'll give us some structure moving forward. But I did see two other hands go up over here. I have a question about the roundabout. Um, how did you guys choose that location versus, you know, further east, or is there a reason? No. So. In all honesty, this project started when I was in high school. Um, <laughs> but when, when I started, uh, I do believe that I was coordinated with Ken Newell's um, multi-use or multi-purpose development that's happening along the north and south side on the west end of this project. So it's coordinated with how that development's going to work out. And the train station? And the train station. One of the things about roundabouts is that they intend to slow down traffic. So if somebody who mentioned the 60 miles per hour, you're not going to be able, to, people are not going to be able to go 60 miles per hour anymore because as you approach the roundabout, you have to be driving at 20, 25. When you get to the roundabout, you have to drive at 50 miles per hour. Otherwise, you're going to cross something else. So that's one of the benefits of it, and it provides more mobility, you know, during the uphill times. So are you all in sync? Are you all in sync with the different other constructions that's going on in the sense of you've got the rail station, you've got the, that 820 mess over there, now we're talking about Trinity, and many of us live in that River Trail West community, that now you're cutting out one of our exits, entrances, I mean, and this is all going to take place in the next I mean, this, it just seems like yeah. is there coordination between y'all? So, so there's always, you know, do we do them all at the same time, or do we stem the the pain for five or ten years? So, so I think most people would agree that they'd rather go through the pain, you know, through two or three years than for ten years. Hi, everybody. <laughs> Sorry. Sorry, I was late, but you got a chance to meet Sandy. And I apologize for my attire. Most of you know I had foot surgery. But when we have meetings like this, it's really important that we hear you. And it's really important that staff is receptive to your concerns, complaints, and suggestions. But there has to be structure that an, an open meeting like this just does not allow. And so I'm asking you if you have cards, emails, phone calls, what have you, please give your specific objection, complaint, any idea to Mitch. You, you've got his email address. Uh, one thing Melissa McDougall always told the group was if you copy Gina, that'll let staff know that she's in on the loop. And my email is my name, gina.bivens at forwardtexas.gov. I've heard some things raised here today that do not pertain to this project, but need to be addressed. And so, in terms of multifamily, I can tell you, multifamily has always been planned in this development before I came into office, but the question is, where and when? That's a question that needs to be addressed. I've heard talk about private fences versus work on the north or the south side. Here's an example. My neighbor had a tree cut, don't tell anybody. 
My neighbor had a tree cut recently, and I had already given the tree away because the city requires two trees when you build a new house. My front yard is very narrow. I didn't want two trees. And so I had a tree taken down, and it left a stump that caused fungus. But my neighbor had a guy taken down a tree, so I just grabbed him and said, how much will you charge? So I'm pretty sure if you want to work with a private contractor who's working across Trinity, I'm sure that can happen. Now, it'll be at your expense, of course. But please give us your specific questions. I'm sure staff has captured as many as they can. I like for meetings like this to end with some kind of direction and not just hearing things but not addressing them. Some things can be, some things can't be. Uh, what I would submit to you is if you're having speeding, I, I'm not real happy with some of our police over here. I had to live with a bus in my cul-de-sac for about a month and a half. And so I called the chief and I asked him, what are your guys doing? Now, where is my NPO? And so we've had some changes. I don't care what the issue is, you gotta call that number. Now, in many cases, when you got speeding going through and it's habitual, it's always happening, again, emailing the 1234, copying me and Sandy, that works. So just, just trust in the system to work. But the complaints that I've heard today, they need to be addressed. I don't think you're gonna get resolution today. And so that's why having this type of business is very important. If, if you heard what you stated earlier that was promised about, I think it was a wall being raised or what have you, email that to Mitch and copy me, and we will bird dog it down the rabbit hole. Sandy loves going down rabbit holes. <laughs> now I will tell you, we have to fight to get that train station. And I'm glad we did. The train station, they were trying to get it in the medical district, but we're the ones closest to the airport. And it's gonna be an economic development generator. Your growth in Lakes and River Trails was so notable, TxDOT on their own came up with that extra exit to help move traffic out of here. And so yes, there is coordination, but try to be orderly in terms of how you get the complaints to us. For me, email is the best way because it creates a paper trail. And folk cannot lie and say they didn't hear what you said you heard them say. I believe in the paper trail. The last thing I will tell you is there's a bond election coming up. Uh, the last time city council put a pay raise before the voters, I was the first one to say no because we did not deserve it. I am neutral. I don't care what people do. I just need you to vote in the bond election. What it does include is a natatorium for the east side. It'll be in stop six. Thanks to HUD and the Trump administration, we got a $35 million grant that helped that community. It's also gonna have Forest Park's pool brought back to grandeur. Make yourself know what's going on in that bond package. Uh, when it comes to getting out the vote, obviously we don't do a good job with that. Hopefully things will get better. But just know that we hear you, I hear you, and the best way to bring about change and impact in your concerns is creating the paper trail. Now I'm gonna go get off my foot. I almost fell on Jackie a while ago, sorry. But I'm gonna go ice it. Thank you for coming. If you got the robocall voicemail, good. If you saw it on City News, good. Please stay engaged. If you're not getting the newsletter from District 5, let us know and we'll add you to the list. Thank you for coming. Help me get off the <laughs>